following episode is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Promotional material will be provided at the end of the broadcast. VHS was once the dominant format for consumer home video. During its brief time in the spotlight, millions upon billions of blank tapes were purchased by humans from all walks of life. They were used in camcorders to preserve memories or in VCRs to record live TV for future consumption. Now, in the year 20XX, these tapes sit dormant in attics, basements, crawl spaces, and thrift stores around the globe. Hi everyone, it's me again, Ian McMystery, and today we're cracking into a fresh case of mystery tapes. Normally I acquire these VHSs in small lots, or sometimes even individually, so this has got to be the largest case of tapes that I've ever gotten a hold of. The repurposed Amazon Presto box proudly claims to contain 66 tapes, or 24 units, which I'm assuming is 66 tapes in French? The biggest fear when acquiring large lots of tapes like this is that every tape is going to contain the same thing, especially if that thing is movies duplicated from other VHS tapes. Now, I'm not here to talk about feature-length movies, I'm here in search of archived oddities that might otherwise be lost to time. The good news is that when I get a tape that's just a film recorded onto it, it's usually clearly labeled. Most of these tapes, which shall be referred to from here on out as the Presto tapes, are a mixed bag. Some are clearly labeled like this awesome looking Super HG Gold Master video cassette. Anne of Green Gables, The Sequil. Uh, despite the dubious spelling, I think we can all pretty safely assume we know what's on that one. Anne of Green Gables is back. No longer an awkward girl, but a mature young woman. Now there are some tapes that are completely unlabeled, as well as some with labels that refer to what I'm assuming are shows with which I'm simply unfamiliar, but the most interesting thing about this Presto lot is that the majority of the tapes are labeled with names. Clinton, which I'm assuming refers to Old Bill. Nancy, which if we're gonna stick with the political angle, could refer to Nancy Reagan. But the largest stack by far is a pile of tapes labeled Martha. My hope was that this was just the name of the person who recorded the tapes and that the pile would just end up being a cornucopia of Martha's various television interests. That's uh, unfortunately not the case. Today I'm going to be talking about six different tapes from the Presto lot, and I think it's fitting that we start with a Martha tape. Martha 15 to be exact. And Eleanor Scarpetta back at the studio is going to show us how she makes her unusual spaghetti pie, so stay tuned. Well, if you guessed Martha Stewart, then congratulations, you're today's big winner. This tape, and I'm assuming all of the other tapes labeled Martha, is packed reel to reel with segments from Martha Stewart Living. How many times have you been stuck with a big bowl of leftover cooked pasta? Well, the Italians have a solution for this problem. Voila, throw it in. And you want to toss it? So you could use your fingers for this. You actually could, should I? You can. Okay. If you're somehow unfamiliar with her work, allow me to clue you in. Martha Stewart is a convicted felon who's most known for her magazines and television shows that generally tend to cover lifestyle topics like food, home decor, crafts, DIY, travel, that kind of thing. Uh, she's also best friends with beloved marijuana enthusiast Snoop Lion. And that's about all I know. This is for chopping something big. <laughs> Outside of her pop culture status, I'm actually not all that well versed in things Martha Stewart, so I can't say that I really understand how she grew to be so popular, uh, but maybe this stack of Martha tapes will help me out. Us, it's very clever and beautiful and delicious, and you can eat the peanuts, by the way. The topics that Martha Stewart covers on just this single tape are at times shockingly broad, from a segment about hanging lights. What's nice about these lights is that they can be put on timers. All the way to a segment about spaghetti pie. And look how wonderful oh. that is. 
That is beautiful. This is perfect for uh, a meal in itself. It's great oh. as a snack. It's a wonderful thing for lunch. Oh, it holds together oh, yeah. so well. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Extremely simple and extremely good. delicious. At the same time, though, the segments could also be oddly specific. For instance, she seems to have a lot of segments involving chairs. And the heavier the chair, the earlier it is. So this is probably about 1660. Can I lift it up? Well, if you oh, can. It is. Yeah, as well. Yeah. It's not light. Even though she doesn't seem particularly interested in chairs. If you take the seat out, you'll see how okay. thick it is. Can we do that? Oh, yes. Look how thick, that's all hewn from the solid. Oh, boy. In fact, Martha Stewart's entire demeanor is not at all what I expected. She's not exactly a lively host, and I don't mean that as a bad thing, she just has a very laid-back presentation style. I'm just working down towards the center of the arm support. Mm -hmm. Good, nice cut. She often rides the line between sounding either really relaxed or really bored. And we're going to drill with an electric drill or a hand drill. Going to use the cordless drill okay. over to your right. I love this one. Okay, so we're going to add that zest, collect it, voila. It's perfect, so yeah, very easy. On the sides, we want to fold in hems that are an equal amount. Now you want to unfold the bottom oh, one first. Oh, unfold, okay. And then there's your little gift bag. Oh, sweet. <laughs> On this table is some new pieces of glass, which I've designed in the last month in Venice. Well, this table really does look stunning, and it will look even more stunning when we sit down and have our lunch. It is by far the best dessert soup I have ever tasted. It's the tofu, and then when you take it out of the freezer, you press it, and you get the water out of it. Have a much more um. Also, I would love to show you how to use a decorative gimp like this silken gimp on a newly upholstered gimp. This is called gimp. It comes from the uh, an old French word called gampa, which means gimp. She really likes food, though. Martha's always perky when there's something tasty on the way. It it's hard to believe that from these little red beans, all this amazing candy is made. Martha ends up talking to a lot of guests. I think that's actually the best part of the show. There are some real characters that show up, like this guy who collects trash for a living. Probably from France, Germany, very few available throughout the country. Very rarely find a complete unit. Be an excellent firebox, a great niche for a fountain, planting pot, just a, an exquisite piece of art. There's a really informative bit about rice washing. A lot of people, American people doesn't wash long. Now, why do you wash it? The flavor comes more nice. Mm -hmm. But of course, I had to save the best for last, so here is my favorite Martha moment. I went to summer camp when I was about 11 years old and um, got a terrible crush on my pottery teacher and took a pottery class because of the crush and then just fell madly in love with clay. People love pottery so much just because it, you get back in touch with your childlike impulse to just play in mud. I've made my hole. I'm applying pressure from the inside. The key is to keep the clay lubricated with water. So now the walls are very thin. And if you'll see, my arms are always braced because I really want to be like a machine making sure that I rule the clay and that the clay does not rule me. Uh, I found also that the pea touch works really, really well. My parents came to visit on Parents Weekend expecting to find a vital young athlete and instead found a pasty, pottery-obsessed camper. I have to note now that most, if not all, of these VHS tapes are capable of recording up to six hours of footage each. Uh, which means that I'm sitting on a stack of potentially 102 hours of Martha Stewart. Uh, that's just too much Martha to talk about all at once. I'm not gonna do that. So as we make our way through this case of tapes, I will sprinkle in some Martha as we go. Uh, but for now, I think I'm ready to move on to something else. Like a lot of basically healthy people,
Stacy, how do you pick a design to use? Now this tape, uh, <laughs> this tape is messed up. Uh, not because of any unsavory content or anything, but because the tape itself has just degraded over time. The footage is um, sometimes unwatchable. This tape starts off with a show called Michael Holigan's Your New House. And immediately, without any further research, I could tell that this series originated in Texas. A slab is the most common type of foundation. It's the easiest to do. Accents aside, these houses are just straight out of the fancy Texas neighborhoods that I used to envy in my youth. The show is a pretty straightforward home improvement show, though instead of simple round the house life hacks, it's more focused on the actual construction of a home. It's kind of like a Martha Stewart show, but for dads. We put a chamfered edge, which is a 45 degree angle, and it really accents the deck and gives it a nice touch. But I'm assuming most people here might find themselves bored with construction focused programming, but hold on, because I've got a great surprise for you. The show also covers home financing. The lender will use a front ratio of 33% to determine how much monthly payment you can afford. The back ratio is higher. On a conventional loan, it's 36%. Whichever ratio is lower, the front ratio. This is just not my cup of joe, but I can imagine my dad sitting down and watching something like this after a long day on the job, so that's kind of cool. But if you happen to be interested or fascinated by your new house, it turns out that they have an active YouTube channel in 2021. It doesn't really look like any new content is being produced, but it appears that a lot of the original show has been preserved for those who still seek a relaxing home tip or two. Try placing a small piece of silly putty under the wobbly leg. Push down hard on the table and your problem goes away. The rest of the tape after Mike Hooligan gets off the screen is Martha. It's it's just more Martha. Yes. Molding and molding and molding. So you're not and really molding. squeezing. Nope, you're I'm pressing, pressing and molding and keep going around a little faster and a little faster and a little faster and a little faster and a little faster. Mm -hmm. a little faster. I think it's pretty safe to assume that we're gonna see some type of antiques roadshow type show on a tape labeled antiques. But what I'm really hoping for here is to unearth some vintage commercials, which are some of my favorite things to find, but have eluded me so far in this case of tapes. Painting of kissing babies, $5,000. Portrait of naked pregnant angel accepting a Golden Globe Award, $50,000. Giant chair or regular sized chair if you were a giant, $500. Painting of a, uh, <laughs> a vague landscape, $12,000. A terrifying multi-headed tribute to grannies. And it's very hard to know who they're trying to represent. $3,500. Granny's revolver. <laughs> I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> you are on camera. $7,000. It turns out that antique shows are kind of addicting. It's basically just a matured version of show and tell, where a supposedly licensed professional appraiser tells someone why their priceless family heirloom is actually only valued at five bucks. I think it's still worth probably about $7,000 in the marketplace today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's less than I had anticipated. Well, I'm, it had been previously appraised at more than that. Well, I'm, 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 I hope it hadn't been too big a disappointment because it's still a very wonderful mm -hmm. piece. But I, you know what? I actually kind of enjoy this tape. Most of it is antiques appraising, which is mildly entertaining. But nestled right in the middle of everything was a really great segment from ABC about the history of Barbie. She has dazzled millions. Very early on, I got completely obsessed. To become the most sought after woman in the world. Those lips, those legs. And the boobs. And the boobs. And the boobs. Yes, even those. Why? This may not come as a surprise to anyone who has a daughter, but there are two Barbie dolls every hour of every day. And by the way, she looks great. Barbie is a doll, a very popular doll at that. And this is a documentary about her origins, her popularity, but most importantly, her fans. I have them all displayed in a case. I go over there and I look at them all the time and I ooh and I ah. 
<laughs> With a glass of wine, maybe, you know. This segment is a welcome change of pace from the antique shows. It's upbeat, informative, and at times, pretty funny. And then there were those like Corazon Yellen, who liked this doll so much, it's a little hard to understand. I have about 900 Barbies in my collection. Actually, it's very hard to understand. The Secret Life of Barbie was produced to celebrate Barbie's 40th birthday and originally aired on June 11th, 1998. Tattoo Barbie, or inflatable Barbie, or nails all over her body Barbie. My favorite parts in the documentary are definitely the ones that involve the Barbie fans. They did a really good job of finding people who uh, love Barbie a lot. Barbie and Ken are on a beach together, and then a big wave came along and knocked them into one another's arms, at which point they started kissing wildly. Sex. Barbie is about sex. But on the other hand, they also did a good job finding people who uh, didn't care for Barbie so much. I think she's a skinny little thing, and her breasts stick out more than they should. Well, once I got a Barbie for Christmas, and eventually I tore its head off. She's not at all like a real human. She's like a monster. Eventually I tore its head off. This is pretty cool. Yeah, this is definitely my favorite segment so far today. I, I had a lot of fun with this one, and I didn't fast forward even a bit. He would come home from work and he would say, um, I'm exhausted, and, and Barbie would say, um, well, you gotta get dressed because we're going to a party. And Ken would say, I just saved eight people from fatal heart attacks. Don't you women know I'm exhausted? And he would bash her, and she would bash him back, and there'd be screaming and yelling. And Francie, who was me, would always come out, and she would sort of try to get in the middle, and then they'd both bash Francie. To order a video cassette or transcript of The Secret Life of Barbie, call 1-800-CALL-ABC. All in all, I think this was a pretty great tape. Uh, I didn't get any commercials, but the Barbie segment was really worth my time. And they even mentioned Seattle at the start of one of the antiques shows. And it's known, of course, for its spectacular surroundings and for its weather, which today is beautifully sunny and bright. When digging through these tapes, it's always really cool to see a place that I visited and even documented before preserved on a tape that's older than my knowledge of said place. Fascinating. Uh, this piece alone is worth about $5,000. Um. Okay, on to tape number four. I can tell already that you're feeling oddly compelled to watch this one because of its handsome packaging. The maroon, the gold, I mean, that's what I call extra high grade. It's labeled only with a single letter, an I, conspicuously placed next to the words sound and color. Is it a clue, perhaps? Never actually seen before. KSPS TV has interrupted the regular schedule of programs to bring you the BBC's broadcast of the funeral of Lady Diana Spencer. No. Nope, it turns out that it was not a clue and that this tape is exclusively dedicated to commercial free, completely uninterrupted coverage of the funeral of Princess Diana. This somber day, the BBC will be bringing you live coverage as events unfold in the capital and around the country, and a week of extraordinary drama reaches its conclusion. From Westminster, Diana's coffin will be driven through North London to the M1, and on to her burial at Althorpe, a journey expected to take four or five hours. Pass? Like, no disrespect or anything, but... Pass? All right, it's time for tape five and tape six. I'm gonna talk about these last two together because while their covers may look completely different, their contents are strikingly similar. Here we go. Very nice. Oh, I love okay. this teamwork. Love oh. this. Gotta have I know. one of you in my kitchen. Okay. Home improvement continues to be an ongoing theme, and I'll admit that I'm growing increasingly concerned that these tapes are going to be exclusively home improvement themed. Makes me wonder what the house is like that originated these tapes. Is it well kept and spotless like Martha Stewart's? Or is every square inch just covered with VHS tapes of Martha Stewart? Either way, some of these smaller home improvement shows make me realize that Martha's success wasn't just a case of right time, right place. She's also just a pretty good host and facilitates an interesting discussion, regardless of if she actually seems interested in the topic. 
Meatloaf in a pumpkin. Right. It's a wonderful recipe, normally made in a nine inch pumpkin, but we made this in a gourd. We made it in the butternut uh, squash. squash. Or you can make it in, in zucchini uh, squash. That's exactly right. Anything that you'd like. Very okay, over recipe. here. On the other hand, these ladies won't stop talking over each other, and it's driving me up a fucking wall. And this is Maggie or Magi. Right. Um, and this is what the contestant. Um, right. Doris the, Thomas, who created this. She loaf. actually used. Right. But if you can't find this, you know what? Right. A teriyaki sauce, soy yes, sauce. That'll, be, that'll add the it's, best it's flavor. Be just sure. the same. No problem. Right, so we can add these. We can add the eggs now. Right. But these tapes do have commercials. I'm not going to say that they're the best commercials I've ever seen exactly. Leaving isn't an easy answer. My kids need a daddy. But there are some in here that I think are worth sharing, so let's go for it. Lighting. For the bathroom. One trip to Eagle. For the light that leads the way home to the bathroom. I noticed a trend of vaguely romantic commercials on these tapes. Like, I don't know if it's the music or the soft lighting, but I'm pretty sure this guy wants to bone his dog. Love doesn't come in a box. It's not about how much you spend. Maxine and I, we feel the same way. And so, I take her to PetSmart. You see, PetSmart's not about money, it's about love, and that's how we are. Keep it to yourself, man. Save that shit for the dark web. Ice, ice, dentine ice. Dentine ice cools your breath twice. I love this dentine ice commercial. Definitely a palate cleanser. I particularly enjoy how they freeze the windshield with their ice-cold breath. I feel like I could watch that on loop all day. Why are they looking at me like that? But the best of the romantic commercials has to be this hair color commercial. Natural, real. I want to look the way I feel. I'm a Grecian bear. Grecian sold. I'm sold. I want to be a Grecian man. You've convinced me. Grecian man, no time for gray. A new generation, a whole new day. Grecian fire. Grecian fire. It's going to be in my head all day. Are video games turning kids into killers? And is violence in the movies producing violence in the schools? 60 Minutes, Sunday. Monday, after an all-new Cosby. I saw commercials that featured some pretty cool visual effects. I definitely think this is one of my favorite eras of VFX. I could watch this shit all day. There were commercials that featured interesting inventions. I can't decide whether the sun tunnel is genius or just really strange. Watertight, energy efficient, and affordable for as little as $300. Either way, it doesn't seem to work very well according to these pictures. Shit looks dark. Let the sun shine in wherever you want it. There were a lot of commercials that I laughed at, but there were also some that made me really stop and think. Maybe at the end of the day, what we want is to get to the truth from a few different angles. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. On the other hand, maybe we just want to bake a pie. I think that the local commercials are always going to be my favorite. There's a really great advertisement for an Idaho restaurant. Chef Cricket announces exciting new fall dinner specials. Your choice of four steak and seafood dinners, just $14.95. Steak and Australian lobster. Steak and scampi. Steak and Australian lobster. Or steak and steaks. And then you got, you know, a creepy clown commercial. Hi, Jingles the Clown and Friends here, celebrating Spokane Children's Theater's 50th birthday. Wait till you see what we've got in store for you this season. <laughs> First off, travel to Never Never Land. I'm not traveling anywhere with Jingles the Clown. Like, are, are these kids okay? Is Jingles gonna let him out of this empty void at some point? Imagine, this man has only one week to practice identifying 30 different flavors of ice cream. Chocolate shit? No, no, no! Then, in front of millions and his family, he has to do it live. I'm ready. You can do it. Go! To win $25,000. Could you do it? This is just one of the big moments you'll see ABC Saturday 8, 7 Central. I thought that this promo was 
equal parts hilarious and fascinating, so I had to do some additional research. The Big Moment is a show that aired in 1999 and is hosted by Brad Sherwood from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Brad Sherwood! Welcome back. And just real quickly, it becomes apparent why the format didn't work. The show is an hour long, and before we even got to the ice cream, I had to sit and watch this guy do... Uh, I don't, I don't really understand what he's doing, honestly. No, that was not amazing. That was perhaps the least amazing thing I've ever seen. Rick the Ice Cream Guy is the next one up, uh, but first I had to sit through his training, which I really I did not enjoy. Yum, yum. Cookies and cream. With the tape on. Let it melt in your mouth. Enjoy all the textures. You got it's nuts good. in there and coconut. Big as the house. Once he gets finished eating all that ice cream, huh, Dad? Finally, after 22 minutes of waiting, it's time for the big moment. Peppermint. Yes, That's all one. right. One down, only 29 to go. This... This is exciting. I'm on the edge of my seat. Another taste. Oh, come on, dude. Another taste? Boo! Hurry up! Boo! Rainbow sherbet. Yes, that's two. Yes! Fudge brownie. Oh! Oh, Richard! Oh! Oh! And then you gotta sit there and watch his family, who all rallied around him and believed in him this past week. They've gotta stand there and choke back tears in front of a national audience and fucking Brad Sherwood. Well, you you tried, Absolutely. and uh, we want to thank you for eating thank ice you. cream and gaining weight. Yeah. We would like to give you two thousand dollars. And let's hear it for the Holic family. Oh, you guys did an awesome Even the crowd looks sad. Like if you've got a comedian on stage, this is not how you want your crowd to look. I, I don't care what show you're on. So I lost. My my job just prior to the holidays. That's a very ugly dandelion. If you're gonna find a dandelion anywhere around here, it's gonna be an ugly dandelion. It can't stand uh, ugly dandelions in my yard of any sort. All right, let's, let's take a look at some brands you know. That's always a good time. There's a shockingly honest Hot Pockets commercial. Hot Pockets may not be a fancy meal, but it's real food with real ingredients. I really don't like these pull apart cheesy shots in food advertising. I love cheese, but something about these shots are just gross to me, not appetizing. McDonald's is running the infamous Monopoly game. Arby's is advertising a sandwich that actually looks good. I hate Arby's. What's, th what's this about? It's not supposed to look good. Uh, and remember Got Milk? I actually hadn't even really registered the fact that Got Milk ever ended. Uh, I guess that's how old I am. I thought they were still milking it. <laughs> Martha Stewart continues to be all over the place. Here she is in a Kmart commercial. See the new everyday garden furniture now at Kmart. I imagine Kmart is really nostalgic for anybody who remembers going to one, uh, like it is for me. There used to be over 2,000 locations in the U.S., and now there's only 17 of them. You know, when you think about it, that's kind of sad. It's almost as sad as Rick's entire family was after he fucking biffed the ice cream challenge. Hey, Richard. Hey. And finally, to wrap up this commercial segment, I can't forget all of my fans out there who are into feet, so it's time for this episode's featured advertisement. Older eaters, feet are sweeter, fresher, drier, cleaner, neater. Only odor eaters, insoles, sprays, and powders have genuine Arm & Hammer baking soda. They destroy foot odor and wetness. Oh, oh, older eaters, feet are sweeter.
<laughs> well, that's our show for today. I hope you had fun. The plan for next episode is to check out some more of the Presto tapes, but if they all end up being home improvement tapes, I might just end up having to do something else. We'll have to see. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, I love you all, and I love your feet. Commencing FTC disclosure. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. FTC disclosure complete. Hi, it's me again, Yummy Milk Ian. As a milk carton man, my entire purpose for existing is to turn slightly sideways and pour my yummy white milk on whatever happens to be beneath me. And boy oh boy do I love splashing my milky whites on some Magic Spoon cereal. Magic Spoon is a line of healthy and delicious cereal whose taste evokes the nostalgia of childhood. I will now recite to you the health benefits of consuming the aforementioned cereal. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only 4 to 8 grams of carbs in each serving, also only 140 calories per serving. This concludes the health benefits portion of the advertisement. It is now time for the personal endorsement section of the advertisement. My favorite flavor is actually the blueberry. Uh, I like it as a breakfast. I like it as a nice sweet dessert. Uh, I could actually sit here and discuss the taste with you for many, many hours. <laughs> it's Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and Magic Spoon is having their best offer yet. You can build your very own four-pack box and use my code BRUTALMOOSEBF for 20% off. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So, if you don't like it for whatever reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use code BRUTALMOOSEBF for 20% off, or go to magicspoon.com slash BRUTALMOOSEBF to get their best offer yet. This offer isn't going to get any better before it ends on Cyber Monday, so make sure you try some Magic Spoon now. Also, for my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK, Govna. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for the delicious sponsorship. The advertisement is now complete. Uh -huh.